How many of us are struggling with burping the baby, letting the baby release air after breastfeeding? Well, because we are told that we have to do it, that after every breastfeeding, we should put the baby over our shoulder or whatever way we want, and we have to do everything possible to make sure that the baby is burping. And many parents would try to do that. They, they will really work on it and they will spend five minutes and 10 minutes and 15 minutes and they'll change positions and they'll try like this and over the lap and bending the baby forward and then again over the shoulder and patting and massaging and circular motions. And at 3 a.m. this patting is becoming a little stronger because parents are like, please, baby, please burp. We all want to go to sleep. Isn't that frustrating for all of us? And guess what? I have amazing news for everyone. Most breastfed babies do not need any help with releasing air after breastfeeding. They don't need to be burped. They don't. They can just go to sleep. They can rest after breastfeeding. And breastfeeding puts babies to sleep naturally and easily. And you know, if we're trying to burp the child and we're putting a lot of effort into it, that actually may wake up the child. And when baby wakes up, he starts crying. And then how do we put the baby back to sleep? By breastfeeding. So we put the child back on the breast and then the baby falls asleep there naturally. And then we start burping the baby again and the baby wakes up again and, and it becomes a, a vicious cycle that we are not able to come out. And baby is not burping and we are frustrated. So you know what? We actually don't need to burp. Most, most breastfed babies will manage wonderfully with no burping. There is a small percentage of babies who may need a bit of extra help and we'll talk about it at the end of the video. But now let's start with the majority of healthy, strong breastfed babies who do not need any help with burping. You may wonder, but, but how is that possible? Everyone tells us that we need to burp the child. Because if we don't burp the baby, then something terrible is going to happen. They will tell you that the baby will, will vomit while asleep and the milk will, will make the child choke and the baby may die. All these horror stories come in. Well, first of all, let's put it at rest. Um, a breastfed child could not choke on his own milk and die uh, from this experience. Um, first of all, breast milk is very light. So if baby was asleep and he needed to spit up some milk and let that bubble of air come out, the milk will easily travel all the way out of the mouth and babies often don't even wake up. While sleeping, the milk will start traveling up the baby will turn automatically the head to the side and the milk will dripple down from the corner of the mouth. And then when baby wakes up, parents may see a small yellow spot next to the baby's head. So they didn't notice. Baby was absolutely fine. And he released some milk because breast milk is very light and easy to travel when needed. Formula, on the other hand, artificial powdered milk is very heavy in composition and it's heavy in weight. So when the child may want to burp after formula, it may not travel all the way out. It may land, it may go up to the middle of the esophagus and then land back into the respiratory tracts. And, and that will be a problem because when formula goes into the respiratory tracts, it causes inflammation, potential bacterial growth. It's not supposed to be there. You know, breast milk usually doesn't end up there because it's so easy to be removed by the baby naturally. But even in the small percentage that it may have gone into the respiratory tracts, breast milk just gets reabsorbed through the mucous membranes and it goes into the bloodstream as the baby ate it. So no danger. Breast milk is not going to rotten, it's not going to cause bacterial infection, it's not going to cause any problem for the child. So we, first of all, we discussed that there is no risk for letting the baby after breastfeeding or after pumped milk being received to sleep without burping. So this is very important. Okay, no danger. Now, what else do we know? We know that um, babies who are formula fat, they may often struggle with gassiness because formula is heavy and difficult to digest. So it often creates bloating. And um, when there is extra bloating, when there is this gas production in the stomach, then the child may need extra help to remove it. Breast milk is exactly suited for the needs of the child. It's human milk for human babies. So breast milk digests very quickly, easily, and it's very unlikely to create gassiness in the child. Also, we know that when babies are drinking from a bottle, they swallow milk much faster than usually they would do on the breast. So uh, a child who is bottle fed 
may gulp milk fast and may not have time to remove whatever air was swallowed through the nose, which usually happens when baby is breastfeeding. Baby would swallow some air through the nose and will release it through the nose by being slow and paced on the breast and taking pauses and not being overwhelmed with the flow of milk. Also, we need to remember that there is air inside bottles, but there is no air inside the breasts. So this is an additional factor that's reducing the potential need for helping the baby with burping. So what we know is that naturally healthy, mature babies are meant to remove whatever air they swallow during breastfeeding through their nose while at the breast. They're supposed to remove it on their own without any extra help um, naturally and spontaneously at some other time. So when you pick up the baby to breastfeed again or switching breasts or when you're changing a diaper, your baby may release this nice burp all of a sudden and surprise you. Another way to remove air if it did get trapped in the stomach is to pass it through digestive tract and then to release it the other way around, to fart. So if your baby is able to fart and to burp on his own and is comfortable after breastfeeding session, the baby relaxed and went to sleep you don't need to do any effort. You don't need to make your baby burp. And, and it's very important to realize that because if we hold the baby for long enough and we pat the baby for strong enough, we actually can produce a burp in the child. Imagine if someone took you, a giant, took you over his shoulder and started patting you for a long time. You also may burp because it's such a stress on the body. So we don't want to do this. We don't need to produce the burp in our child. We, we want to let the baby rest and we need to rest after breastfeeding session. And we only need to offer burping if the child needs it, okay? If you still don't believe me, I did a little bit of research to show you what other breastfeeding professionals are stating. So I took some reliable, well-documented, famous resources. For example, I took the book Womanly Art of Breastfeeding, an amazing golden manual of breastfeeding as people often refer to it around the world. So this is the eighth edition, the, the most recent one. And I opened up at the index and I looked through all the pages that mention burping. I did the same for this amazing resource. It's called Breastfeeding Answers Made Simple. It's an excellent resource and it's wonderful for medical professionals and breastfeeding professionals if anyone's interested. You can find information here on any subject, literally, on any difficulty, any unexpected situation. Okay, so in this book that's ironically called, called Answers Made Simple, which is over 1,000 pages and it's really heavy, I also looked up here on every page that mentioned the word burping and I took the book of uh, Dr. Jack Newman and Teresa Pittman, Ultimate breastfeeding book of answers. Dr. Jack Newman is a famous Canadian lactation consultant and a prominent speaker at uh, international conferences. Uh, many people call him a guru of breastfeeding. So I also looked up here and guess what did I find? I found that in these two books when burping was mentioned it was only mentioned in the context of challenges in health that babies may have, and then burping may help them with those challenges. Okay, and, and this is where we are leading to now. At the end of the video, I'll explain what are the situations where burping, helping the baby burp may be useful. Okay, in the book of Dr. Jack Newman, there isn't even such a thing in index as burping. Okay, so we, we, he doesn't even explain that we have to do this in some specific way. And you may think that, oh, books, books nowadays are outdated. The internet, if we go searching on the internet, we'll find all these positions, how we need to burp the child and how important it is we need to go on the internet. Okay, let's go on the internet, but let's look at reliable evidence-based sites of breastfeeding professionals. For example, two incredible resources that parents can trust and can go check them out anytime is the site of an international board certified lactation consultant in the United States, Kelly Banyata, and it's called kellymom.com. This is an evidence-based site. So if you search her site, you will see that burping comes up only for special situations. If the child has certain conditions and we need to help the baby, there is not one article that says we have to burp the child and we need to start after birth and we need to do it in this position for this long. 
Okay, you're still not convinced? Well, check out another resource called breastfeeding.support. This website is run also by an IBCLC and La Leche League leader, uh, Philippa Person Glaze. And the same situation there. If we look up burping on her site, you'll see it only comes up for special situations, not for healthy, strong, mature, full-term baby who is, who is happy to fall asleep after breastfeeding. So let's talk about the special cases when our help may be needed with burping for our child. I will name five common reasons. Number one, if the baby was born premature. When the baby was born early, he may not have that natural ability to know how to release air by himself between feedings, by burping spontaneously, or by farting. So he may need some extra help, at least in the beginning. Number two could be reflux. When the child would, would have the stomach cover that's not closing tightly after feeding, and then the milk together with acid may start traveling out of the stomach, and the acid will be irritating esophagus and hurting the child, causing inflammation, pain. And some people think that reflux is when the baby spits up milk. Not necessarily. There are also cases of silent reflux where the acid would come out and the milk will be traveling up and down the esophagus, but there is no spitting. And there are cases when baby spits up milk, but is not hurt. There is no acid coming out. It's just extra milk that came out. And some breastfeeding professionals refer to it as happy spitting. So that, that's not a reflux and we don't need to interfere and somehow try to help the child. So if the child has true reflux and there is that acid traveling up and down, even a small bubble of air can, can upset the child because it may push the milk upward and with milk comes acid and it hurts the baby. So if you suspect your baby has reflux, you may offer extra opportunities during and between feedings for vertical position where it's easier for the air to come out without pushing the milk forward and with it some acid that may hurt. Okay, number three situation when baby may need extra help with burping after feeding is when mom has oversupply and she has fast flow of milk from the breast. At that time, the baby may be gulping milk rapidly during feeding. So when he'll be going, he may not have time to release whatever air he's swallowing through the nose back out through the nose because he's swallowing so fast. So if mom has fast flow of milk, she also may watch the baby for the signs of discomfort after feeding and offer extra opportunities for the baby to be upright and release that air. For example, during the feeding, it doesn't have to be after the feeding. You can nurse for a bit of time, then you can remove the baby, burp him, and then return to the breast and continue feeding. So now we have three common uh, situations when burping may be helpful. So prematurity, reflux, fast flow of milk if mom has oversupply. Okay. Number four common situation would be if, um, if if baby was crying before the start of feeding. Because when babies are crying, they disorganize their breathing pattern. And then when they take the breast, they may be trying to suck. And at the same time, they will be still crying and upset. So they'll be like... <laughs> And when they do this, they are, may not be able to release air through the nose as it usually would happen during the feeding. So that's another reason why it's strongly recommended that we offer the breast to our baby before the child started crying. Crying is considered to be a late sign of hunger. And when we offer the breast during crying, we are more likely to face challenges such as bloating inside the baby's stomach, the need to help the baby with burping, and the baby may overeat and then they'll be more likely to have to spit up and be uncomfortable because he just was too hungry, too stressed out. Also, he might not be patient to open the mouth wide on the breast. And this may hurt mom because when babies take the breast, shallowly into their mouth and just the nipple around and they clamp on it and they suck strong because they're so stressed. This is affecting the comfort of breastfeeding and then mom may not be able to enjoy and baby's too stressed as well. So it is strongly recommended that we offer the breast on early signs of hunger when baby is just starting to wake up and is still calm and patient and not too hungry. We'll have another video about that. So another, the last fifth reason I would like to mention now is when the baby has a lip tie or a tongue tie. These are special physiological conditions when under the lip or under the tongue, there is that frenulum, that connection that is holding the lip or the tongue too tight, not allowing the baby to 
flange the lip upward or extend the tongue forward to take the breast as deep as it should be in the mouth. And also when baby has a tongue tie, he might not be able to do the proper wave-like motions with the tongue under the breast. Uh, and the breast may be slipping away from baby's mouth. And when there is a shallow latch and the breast is slipping away, the baby may be losing seal on the breast and losing vacuum. So you may even hear sometimes clicking on the breast. So baby will be nursing and now and then you'll hear... And when this clicking is happening, some babies pull in air from the corners of their mouth and then they will be swallowing air through their mouth and it may also get trapped in their stomach. So babies with lip tie and tongue tie are more likely to need help with burping too. Again, it's more likely. It doesn't mean that every child who is premature or who has reflux or if mom has oversupply or if baby was crying or baby has a lip tie and tongue tie would need help with burping. No, it's just that the, the chances that the baby may need our help are higher. So we watch our child. We look at our baby. If our baby after breastfeeding, even with this uh, specific situations and conditions, is comfortable, he fell asleep, he is relaxed, and later on he farts or burps by himself when he needs, then we don't need to interfere. Okay, we just watch our child and our baby will always guide us. And what is common in one stage may change next week or next month. So babies outgrow reflux, they learn to latch better. And even if they have lip tie or a tongue tie and um, the, the fast flow of mother's milk may calm down. So we go with the baby's pace day by day, week by week. When baby needs help, we offer it. When baby is calm and relaxed, we relax as well.